Whilst it may seem absurd, some players are so elite and so consistent they just seem to go under the radar, and Kevin De Bruyne is one of those players. If you're an attacking creative midfielder, you may look at his abnormal feats, which he has almost normalised over the past decade, and wonder how you can play like him. And whilst you may identify some of these more obvious attributes, such as his long shooting, his ball carrying, or his passing range as the obvious things to try to replicate, there are a lot of overlooked attributes in his game that really make him stand out compared to other attacking midfielders, and help distinguish him as a truly world-class player. So how can you play like Kevin De Bruyne? Well, we'll start off with what makes De Bruyne De Bruyne, and that's his creativity. De Bruyne passes impeccably well over any distance, long or short range, with either foot, but of course it's his right foot which usually does the damage. But it's not simply enough to look at what he does with the ball at his feet. You've also got to look at how he gets into these dangerous positions in order to give himself the opportunity to create in the first place. And the key to De Bruyne's positioning is occupying the space between the opposition's midfield and defensive lines. Because this means that when he receives the ball, he can quickly turn out he's already ahead of the midfielders behind him. And now he can either look to find Manchester City's front line making runs in behind the back line, or if the opposition's back line drop off to cover this space, De Bruyne has now got space in front of him to drive into. And we can see this positioning in this example, as Rodri has a ball just in the middle third, in front of the Newcastle midfield double pivot, but De Bruyne cleverly has positioned himself not just in behind the midfield, but he's sitting between both of the Newcastle central midfielders, opening up a passing lane from Rodri straight into his feet, and of course Rodri finds a ball split in the Newcastle midfield. But what makes De Bruyne so good from these positions is his efficiency. He doesn't take too long on the ball and takes just the right amount of touches, but it's his vision and awareness which really distinguishes him from every other creative midfielder on the planet. Before he even received the ball off Rodri, he knew that City's front three were going to provide those runs in behind Newcastle's high back line, and so when he receives a ball of his back foot, opening up his body, he doesn't have to take another touch before looking to play that pass in behind for Haaland. And whilst this may seem like the obvious option, if he had gone for either of City's two wide players, they probably don't get in as high a value goal scoring opportunity as Haaland does. And that's really the key to De Bruyne's game. He always picks the optimal option as he does here, releasing Haaland into a 1v1 situation, which unfortunately the Norwegian can't put away, but it was still a fantastic chance created firstly from De Bruyne's positioning and then from his choice and weight of pass. But it's not just Kevin De Bruyne's passing or assists that make him so dangerous. He's essentially the complete modern day attacking midfielder, capable of picking the ball up in the middle third and driving through into space, bypassing players and carrying it into the final third. And when he's in the final third, his immaculate technique doesn't just apply to his passing, but also to his shooting off both feet as well, capable of getting the ball out of his feet and striking the ball with very little backlift, powering it past the keeper into the net off of both feet making him a real threat in terms of creating chances for others, but also scoring them himself. With the goal that he scored against Arsenal in the title running being a great example of this, John Stones plays a long ball upfield under pressure from Arsenal in his own defensive third, into Erling Haaland who's able to get the ball under control and lay it off for Kevin De Bruyne, who's then able to use his powerful athletic ability to run ahead of Erling Haaland and drive through the Arsenal back line, able to carry the ball to the edge of the box before whipping the ball powerfully past Ramsdale into the bottom corner. And this is what really defines Kevin De Bruyne, particularly when you compare him against other playmakers of his generation like Meza Ozil or David Silva. And if you want to play like De Bruyne, you need to develop your athletic ability, allowing you to drive past players in the centre of the pitch, enabling you to get into these chance-creating and shooting positions yourself, rather than solely relying on moving into space and having one of your teammates find you with a pass. But what makes De Bruyne so good is that he's not just dangerous when he's receiving the ball in behind the opposition's midfield line, but he can also create chances out of nowhere from wide positions, but also from deeper positions in the midfield as well. Here's an example from a game against Newcastle when Rodri plays the ball into Kevin De Bruyne, who's about to receive the ball on the edge of the final third with the whole Newcastle midfield line still between him and the goal. But this is what makes De Bruyne truly world class, as he receives the ball and gets the ball out of his feet, you can see that the obvious passing options are firstly the run from the right back Akanji, who could be found with a lofted pass over Newcastle's left side, or there's also Erling Haaland who's dropping off from the forward line and De Bruyne has the opportunity to play a midfield splitting pass, getting the ball into his feet on the edge of the box. And both of these passes would be very good options, but if you want to play like Kevin De Bruyne, the key is to find the optimal pass, and the optimal pass is something that most central midfielders won't see. 
But De Bruyne's awareness of not just his teammates' movements, but also the positioning of the opposition defenders, combined with his vision and technical ability to actually make the pass, is what actually creates a high-value shooting opportunity from this position with just one pass. And it comes from De Bruyne getting his head up and not only seeing Bernardo's movement centrally in behind the Newcastle back line, but also recognising that with one of the Newcastle centre-backs stepping out of the defensive line to move on to Erling Haaland's deeper movement, a passing lane has now opened up and De Bruyne is able to completely split the Newcastle defensive line with an immaculately weighted and timed through ball, releasing Bernardo Silva into a 1v1 situation from where he's able to score. And De Bruyne is not just a threat from deeper positions in the midfield, he's also a threat from out wide as well. Here we see at the start of this move that Raheem Sterling is in the left-sided half space while De Bruyne has picked up a position in the right-sided half space. And whilst he certainly is down to Pep Guardiola's Manchester City system and depending on the system you're playing in, you probably will have to adjust your position, sitting between the opposition's defensive and midfield lines is definitely the optimal area to be positioned in from a creativity standpoint. And as the pass gets fed into De Bruyne, because of his vision and awareness, he's already checked over his shoulder. He knows Bernardo Silva's on his outside, and so first time, he just sweeps the ball into his path. But it's from here where we really start to see De Bruyne's football intelligence. You can see Bernardo Silva is carrying the ball down the right flank, and whilst many attacking midfielders would probably look to make a forward run into the box, De Bruyne recognises that because Christian Eriksen is moving into a deeper position, in order to create a 2v1 against Bernardo Silva, the space is actually behind him, and so De Bruyne just pulls off Eriksen into this deeper position on the flank, which means that when Bernardo Silva lays the ball back to him, he's in the optimal position to first time swing in a curling cross towards the back post, finding Raheem Sterling, who's coming round the back, and because De Bruyne has used that trademark first time cross from that right-sided half-space position, the pace is already on the ball, and Sterling just heads the ball back across goal into the far bottom corner. And so in order to play like Kevin De Bruyne, it's not just enough to have immaculate technique with your passing and your shooting, you also need the positional awareness to find space in between the opposition's midfield and defensive lines, and the vision to actually see and play those sorts of passes to release players into goal-scoring opportunities. Combine this with the ability to be a chance-creating threat from out wide or deep in the midfield, then you yourself can develop into the complete modern attacking midfielder just as Kevin De Bruyne has done. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video check out some other others, and subscribe to the channel as well for more videos like this.